can he excel yeah. in whatever and i think maybe i think on that front i i may have been a bit of a disappointment in the family because i was not excelling in studies right thank you so much for doing this with us sir and um, we've done a lot of research for a lot of people mm -hmm. through this series and uh, you were incredibly difficult to find information about okay. so there was a lot about the company about your professional life but mm. very little about your personal life so yeah. that's my first question okay. is it intentional so karishma thank you very much for for having me on this show and my pleasure to be on this uh, platform um relatively i'm a quiet person <laughs> and uh, understated mm. uh i think the credit for whatever happens goes to the organization and not to me personally because ultimately it's the organization which which is responsible for whatever we are today and not me alone right so i think that's that's my philosophy that you know it's i am i am working for the organization right and it's not in my interest to project my image which yeah could be higher than the organization but the organization mm -hmm. comes first and i come second right and how has it been to be away from you know the the media boom or the digital boom that has happened i mean you maintain a very low profile so do you enjoy it do you so i'm open to uh, <clears throat> being on the media so it's not that i go on saying no to media but i don't proactively promote myself it's more reactive somebody yeah. approaches me then or if there is a reason why i need to be on media i i agree to be but um i think that's how i'm built you know and yeah. i don't want to tom tom <laughs> my story you know there has to be credibility in what i'm saying and i don't want empty promises or empty statements to project myself right right so hopefully we get some of those answers that we were looking for <laughs> in this interview i'll try my best to give you those answers <laughs> okay um <clears throat> so you know you come from an era where uh, mumbai was bombay Yes. So can you tell us a little bit about your childhood years what were those like uh, so <clears throat> i was born in a joint family right and i was born at uh, the joint family house not in hospital oh okay. okay so we have a family house at haji ali on the circle and uh, my grandfather had 10 children <laughs> oh wow okay <laughs> so out of that my father and three brothers so mm. four families staying in the same building wow and uh, my cousins and you know the whole family itself was so large uh, and at that time uh, everything was common in the sense that there was common kitchen hmm. so because at a time nobody we would not be able to sit about 10 15 people so hmm. we would first 8 o'clock or 7:30 the kids would sit yeah and after that the adults, the adults would sit yeah. you know and I mean, it was a lot of camaraderie fun hmm. uh, and the family had a lot of diverse interests right so one was exposed to a lot of diversity in terms of interests themselves mm. um my father and one of my uncles played golf uh one of my uncle was a rider and a polo player mm -hmm. one of them sailor in terms of sports but mm. in terms of music everybody was interested in the same kind of music so wow. it was indian classical music <laughs> and every day we would it would be played in the evening mm. uh, before dinner or after mm. dinner and that's how i got my liking for indian classical music you know? wow okay so if you ask me what's my most shall i say favorite music it's the indian classical vocal music that's and i amazing. think that came from my childhood because of the fact that i was listening to it and that's how i developed interest now like that's how you grew up that's how i grew up but yeah. being in a joint family is a different completely different ball game yeah. there are so many family members there is so much of at one level camaraderie doing things together but at the same time there is a lot of values of tolerance right. uh, you know giving in not being rigid about it because i think you have to stay together yeah, yeah. exactly like yeah. you you are basically making it work Correct. effectively yeah yeah any particular incident that you remember fondly from your childhood any any one memory that about, that's very uh, vivid I mean, it's like we do a lot of crazy things. You know, as kids, I was one of the el elder ones. Yeah. You know, and after that, many of my cousins were much younger. You know. Yeah. So many a time, we would just uh, decide in privately amongst ourselves that before when when the food came in, we are going to attack one dish, <laughs> and we have to ensure that that one or two dish get over, and elders don't get anything of that. <laughs> 
So those kind of games we played a lot, and yeah. then I used to in my early days I used to spend time in organizing sales, collect different things, and you know, call the family members and other members in the building to mm. come and buy things. So oh, wow. I had that that passion for for business. Wow. Which I never imagined it would <laughs> turn into a bigger business yeah, then. Yeah. But I had those genes in terms of buying, selling, profits, right. you know, making money. That's amazing. Yeah. And what is um, what is some of the earliest stuff you sold? <laughs> what I think knickknacks at yeah? home, and you know, just collected something from outside <laughs> or make something at home. Right. Thing like that. Complete right. knickknacks. Right. Yeah. And did you always know <laughs> that you want to get into or be a businessman? Absolutely. I was very clear from okay. the beginning that I am not going to work for anybody. Wow, because uh, I, I still can't imagine my reporting to somebody. <laughs> That's not me. And from the day I started working, I have been, I have driven my own destiny in the sense that I didn't report individually to a family member also. Right. And whatever I have done, I have done it on my own because, at one level, I'm independent. Right. I want, I wanted to be independent from day one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I think that's something which I. I was very clear about. That's amazing that you had that clarity of thought uh, since the very beginning. Because yeah. a lot of people, especially the youth, go through life, you know, on a set path. Yes. Not knowing. Yeah. Um, but it's amazing that you. But I didn't know what I was going to do. I mean, only thing I knew was that I'm not going to work for anybody. <laughs> so and it has number to be two, business. I have to manage the business, and I have to be the leader of the business. <laughs> That's yeah. all you knew. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. And were there any other hobbies that you took up as a child, just on the uh, side? Various things, you know, playing games in the building, cricket and things cricket, like that. And yeah. then uh, I used to play sitar when I was young. Oh, wow. So play squash. I was staying next to the building club. Okay. At Hajir, yeah. 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 So go to the club for swim, playing squash. So mm. active at one level. I think the whole family was active in doing something yeah. beyond just work. You know. So yeah. I was also pursuing those passions. And what kind of a student were you? Were you like a? I have always been quiet, okay, as an individual, <laughs> and as a student also, I relatively quiet. Okay. So not very boisterous, not very vocal. Yeah. And um, not that good in studies. I was good, but somewhere in in the middle or little upper middle in terms of the ranking. Right. But not the top. <laughs> that was not me. I was not the topper ever yeah. in any subject or overall also. And were there any expectations of you to, you know, like study harder or like, I mean, you know, the family always has expectations, you know, yeah. that okay, can he excel yeah. in whatever? And I think maybe I think on that front, I I may have been a bit of a disappointment in the family because I was not excelling in studies. Right. And after school, what did you do for college? How did that? So I I got at that time the mark percentage were very very different than today's percentages. Yeah. I got into Sydenham College, right. which is at that time, the best commerce college, I think, in the country. Now it's gone down, but I got admission on merits. Yeah. I got, so I think that was good. I always wanted to study. Okay. I was very clear I'm going to study commerce, economics, and I am not cut out for technology, science kind of thing. Arts, I was not interested <laughs> because I wanted to be in business. Commerce and economics made sense for me. And yeah. I got into that college. So I did my BCom hmm. and studied accounting, economics, business management as a part of the BCom course. Hmm. Uh, I was very clear that I'm not going to do a chartered account because okay. that's not me. I, I mean, chartered account is more accounting and yeah. I wanted to be in business. Yeah. I was keen to do MBA. I applied also in some other schools. At those days, the schools, MBA schools, were just two or three schools. Yeah. There was IIM Ahmedabad, there was IIM Calcutta, and there was uh, Bajaj. Yeah. I was not that bright enough to get into <laughs> a school. So. So how did you deal with that rejection? So, I mean, it was very, very tough to get. So at one level, I was not that confident of getting it. So my because there was a group discussion and. Being a quiet person, I didn't, maybe I didn't make that impact in the group discussion. Yeah. Uh, so, and I mean, I my expectation for getting the admission there was not high, so I was not disappointed. Okay. But I was disappointed on some other front at that time that I wanted to go abroad and do MBA because I could have done that. Yeah. I could have got admission in one of the schools in the US or wherever. <coughs> but that my father said no. Oh. So my father was very, I mean, he was very strong as a person and if he said no, it was no. He yeah. couldn't do anything about it. Yeah. So I and what was his that. reason for saying no? I mean, I didn't ask him because 
those days, you know, there was, di- there was a difference in terms of father right. son. Now these days, it's very different. Yeah. So I think maybe he thought that I will, I will never come back. Yeah. Or I'm, I will get married to somebody there. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm yeah. guessing. Yeah. Or maybe he thought that uh, the company at that time didn't need a highly qualified person. Right. And I think looking back, that was a very good decision my father took because that forced me to to learn a lot on my own. Yeah. To read a lot, to interact with thought leaders, mm. to attend short-term training programs, mm. to build something from the bottom. Mm. And I think if I had come back after studying or doing my MBA there, I would have been a very frustrated person. Yeah. So looking back, I think that was a very good decision. Wow. That's it's how it turns around you when you realize absolutely. looking back. Yeah, yeah. And you said an interesting thing, you know, that you started meeting with thought leaders. Yes. Um, how you and you keep referring to yourself as a quiet person, yeah, an introvert. Yeah, yeah. So what was that switch like? So I think the key thing is it is combined with a burning desire to learn and succeed. Right. So if I want to succeed in it, that success is within me that I have to do come what may to yeah. to overcome some some learning uh, or something that I'm not good at. Yeah. Then that the desire to succeed over comes everything in. else. Yeah. So, I mean, you would identify individuals uh, who could help. Mm. So, and then meet them and then it's more a one-on-one discussion. It's not a discussion. I mean, I attended short-term training programs, but yeah. the thought leadership interaction would be more one-on-one. Right. Which I was very comfortable with. Okay. That, yeah. 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 And what was your college life like? Were you... Uh, Again, same as school, not really a star, right. not a dud, right. somewhere in between. <laughs> but were you naughty? Were you up to tricks? No, by and large, I was a little bit more on the quiet, quiet side. side. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And um, after college, what was the process like? After college, because I couldn't do my MBA, there was no other option for me to join the business. Hmm. So I joined the business at the age of 20. Wow. So... Do you remember your first day at work? Uh... See, the first in prior to that in my college days, in the summer vacations, mm. I used to go to office for half a day. Yeah. I would go in the morning and, you know, those days everything was shared. The mm. whole family, that means me and my uncles would go in the same car to the office. Yeah. I would work for half a day and then come back by BST bus from office to home. Right. And the office was located in the heart of commodity markets in Masjid Bandar, which is a very crowded locality. Mm. So, I had gone to office many, many times and mm. I would do routine things like, you know, doing posting ledgers and mm. small, small mm. routine stuff, you know. Mm. So, because of that, I don't really remember my first day in office because I had already been exposed to office many, Since many, many times. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 And at this point, did you have like a role model <clears throat> or somebody you aspired to become like? I didn't have an individual, but uh, I think as... I wanted to be in business which was relatively non-technology-led because I'm not a technology person. I wanted to be in business which meant that I didn't have to go to Delhi to get a license right, or to deal with bureaucrats. Yeah. I did not want to be in business which was a B2B business mm. which meant going to a buyer for selling an industrial product. Mm. But that was not me. I yeah. could never have entertained somebody, taken that person out, knowing the fact that I was a quiet person or just using personal networks to, to score Leverage, victories yeah. Yeah, in the business space. So, I think that was some of the no's mm. for me. Mm. And it so happened that I was able to identify the consumer product business which didn't require any licensing. Yeah which meant I had to deal with the likes of distributors and, you know, mm. I was very comfortable doing that. Mm. And uh, I didn't have to entertain anybody. Yeah. Uh, so I think it was a good fit in terms of my own mm. references, my strengths and yeah. where I went. Yeah. Yeah. And did you have any mentor? So I, initial stages, you know, I, as I said, I, it was a completely family managed mm. organization. Mm. The full, my father and my uncles were managing the company. There were no professionals. Mm. We had some family relatives, acquaintances helping the family. So nobody guided me. Nobody, I mean, I was just let loose by my father. Now, over a period of time, I've, I started meeting Professor Ramcharan for many, many times. Right. 
so in a way you can say that he's been mentor to me he has guided me uh, but he stays in us so you know I just read him, his book yeah yeah mm-hmm. so i meet him once in 3 months 6 months but whenever you meet i him. have something yes i can meet him hmm. yeah wow right yeah. and do you remember what the first thing was that you worked on when you entered the business so first thing was actually in the first one year i must have looked at very we had different businesses we had a we had a edible oil business we had a spice extracts business we had a chemical business so i went to all the factories i went to meet the customers uh, who were handling it so it was more exposure to different businesses and i think that exposure helped me to to zero in on the on the edible oil business yeah. and convert that business from unbranded to branded right yeah right. and was there any you know because you come from a business family that's yeah, successful yeah, yeah, was yeah. there this weight of expectation uh, either f- by you on yourself or from your family you know that you have to perform or you have to meet up to certain benchmarks See, there's always an expect i was the first person from the next generation to join business so my father three brothers i am the eldest amongst mm-hmm. my cousins so naturally they would they would see because any change in generation brings in different set of thinking yeah. and expectations so of course the expectations would be there that okay what is the new thing is bringing about do you ever feel like there was <clears throat> there was a time or a, or a few or a period where um you felt let down or you felt like it's not working out for you in the initial days uh, yeah many times there would be some resistance from the family in terms of adding people or you know giving higher salaries so it's more to do with talent hmm. the type of talent you are recruiting the compensation i to recruit good talent you need a, need to build a certain image so image building is very important yeah. because you have to attract good talent then to attract good talent you need a good office premise and we yeah. have the worst office premises <laughs> i think it's one of the worst places in the earth to have an office <laughs> So I had a lot of limitations. Yeah. But you never give up, you know. So I used to call uh, potential candidates to the Wellington mm-hmm. Club, which is like one of the best clubs yeah, in Bombay. Yeah. <laughs> May meet them once, twice, prepare them mentally, and then call them to the office. Because prior to that, I used to call them to the office. Before coming to the office, they would run away. <laughs> so you have to find some alternative means to work to make it happen. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, I think it. I was held back because mm-hmm. of all these. three different businesses in one company so many family members in one yeah. company by then three four of my cousins had joined the mm-hmm. business so if you have seven or eight members of family in one company the professionals are are scared what will happen to the family whom will they report to will there be a dual reporting so and these are real issues you know of for the professionals so i i think that phase was uh, very very frustrating for me where i was not uh, my hands were tied down and i was not able to progress because of all these limitations mm-hmm. Is that why you decided to demerge? Uh, yeah, I think uh, it took me two to three years to demerge, and I had to convince the family. Yeah, I had to drive consensus. And uh, was there resistance? Back, uh, yeah, yeah, huge resistance. What was the resistance? Like, like why? Because by then the business I had built up in in main company, the holding company, Bombay Oil Industries, yeah. was the largest. It was yes. forming eighty percent of the. Wow, companies turn over more than hundred percent of the profit. This is Safola and parachute. parachute, yeah. And more than hundred percent of the profit. So you know, if this business is taken away from Bombay Oil Industries, it will be left with a very small kind of a mm. base. Mm. Uh, not that I was asking for an additional stake. Mm. The stake in the business has always been twenty-five percent each. My father and three of his brothers. Yeah. So when Marico was formed, also it was twenty-five percent. I only had share just because I built the business. doesn't entitle me to a higher share right. I mean, many families they think that they built a certain business so i should get a more higher Correct. i think that doesn't work in the family yeah. i was prepared for a, for the same stake but in spite of that as i said there was a resistance it took me 2 to 3 years to break that resistance mm-hmm. and ultimately i think to me looking back that has been the most important decision step in my career because if i had not been able to resolve that issue mm-hmm. i would have been fighting family issues which were restricting me and this gave me a lot of freedom to build a culture of innovation to recruit talent at a higher cost to do image building yeah. 
So all of a sudden, you know, I was free to do whatever you wanted. I wanted. Yeah, yeah. And let's talk a little bit about these two flagship brands, right? Yeah. Which are still <clears> household <throat> names yes. decades yes. later. Yeah. How yeah. do you build it up from ground up? Parachute and <laughs> Sephora. So I think most of the people ask me, what is, what, why brand new parachute? <laughs> and it so happened at that time, when I joined the organization, the brand name was there. It mm. was given by my uncles in the World War days. Parachute was a new thing in the World War days. Mm. And uh, mainly we were selling parachute, coconut oil and big tins yeah. to the retailer. And in turn, the retailer would sell it to the consumers and lose. Yeah. And everybody told me, including my uncle, that why don't you have to change the brand name. <laughs> you can't have the parachute. But I don't know why, but it just... It's I didn't. It stuck. And I said, no, let me continue with Parachute. So, Parachute continued since then. Safola also was there. Safola comes from safflower oil. At that yeah. time, we only had safflower oil. Good for the heart. So, I had the seeds of these two businesses, but very small, minute mm -hmm. quantities we were selling of Parachute and Safola. And nobody was paying attention to that. Yeah. Now, I took these two and then made them into a uh, big, I mean, it was just, uh, there was no thought process. Was it just something that you felt attracted to in terms of uh, prospects? No, there were some feelers uh, from the family itself. We were supplying a lot of coconut oil in tankers right. to a company in, in uh, East India. Mm. They were packing in small packs. We had a very good quality oil. Mm. So, I mean, people would go on saying that how this party has developed brands. So, there were some triggers from the family prior to my... Uh, joining the business, uh, I think my father was had told me, okay, you go abroad for 45 days tour. So I immediately after passing my graduation, I went to US and Europe for 45 days with a friend of mine, just two oh. of us. <laughs> and uh, I think that really opened up my eyes because I went to those days, there were no supermarkets here. Mm. I'm talking of 70, early 70 yeah. or 71. Mm. So, I was very impressed by, you know, all the supermarkets and options available to yeah. the shoppers. So, I think somewhere that also played an important role mm. in creating this brand that you can actually... Like make it this, like that. Correct. Right. Yeah, correct. Right. So, I think it just in my initial uh, forays, uh, I got positive vibes. I started tasting success and I started developing confidence. Right. Yeah. And after you demerged, uh, how old were you at that point in time? 40. You were, you were 40. Yeah. And you, you, you no, obviously... Not 39, 51, 39. Okay. Yeah. And you were obviously competing with um, FMCG giants at that point in time. So, how did you manage to kind of be like, okay, I'm also here and this is what I'm doing? So, it so happened that these two products, we were not directly competing with any of the FMCG giants. Right. I mean, there were other other FMCG players, but uh, not the giants like Levers and all. At that time, later on, they entered the category. Mm. That's a different thing. Mm. So, but it was competitive. And uh, I mean, we had to improve our distribution. We had to innovate a lot mm. uh, to gain higher market shares and grow the business. Yeah. yeah. And parallelly in your life, can you talk us through your family life? How did you meet your wife? <laughs> 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 Nothing on the internet so, anywhere <laughs> except the name. <laughs> so I got married when I was I think 25 or 26. Okay. And uh, she's a Bombay girl I, from Gujarat. I'm from part of Gujarat but from Kutch. Right. So not typical Gujarat. She's from Gujarat. You know. So I had met her at a wedding and then you know uh, we met a few times before we got engaged. Wow. Yeah. And how was that process? So, you were working long hours, obviously. So Not how much, you know, I've no. always uh, had a fairly, I don't know why, but I have had a, in these days, they talk a lot about work-life balance. Yeah. From day one, I've had a very good work-life balance. Yeah. I don't know why, but I, I always felt that I had to devote time to, in the evening for myself, whatever I wanted to do, whether, mm. mostly for me, it's more physically fitness mm. in the evening, whether it's walk or gym or play, whatever, yeah. squash. So, I have never sat in the office beyond 5.36, never. Oh, wow. Never. Uh, but I have taken the work home. Most of the time, people don't know, I I spend one hour in the evening, if there is work. I Just catching take, up. Yeah, I mean, I take printouts or whatever and I work from home. You know? yeah. But that, those two hours are very important for me. Mm. 
Yeah. And I also used the time in coming to office, going back hmm. from office. To me, that's like a mobile office. You know, I'm always working, I'm doing reading or making calls and things like that. Yeah. yeah. And what are some of the things that you would do with your wife? So, I mean, one is travel and she also is fond of Indian classical music. So that oh, wow. then we, and then, you know, socializing with friends. She doesn't play, I play golf now. I shifted from school, but she doesn't, she's not a sports person. <laughs> uh, so. And back in the day, any special memory with her? Something that you still remember? <laughs> <laughs> so, special memory is from the day I got engaged to the day I married. Yeah which was a gap of about six, seven months. I met her every day. How oh, sweet. <laughs> so, that's the memory which I have. <laughs> it's really sweet. And not, she was not staying there. We were staying at Haji Ali, she was staying at Wadi. So it was very convenient for yeah. me to go there or for her to come here. Yeah. yeah, it's really sweet. And, um, you know, you spoke about work-life balance. Uh, how is it How is it that you manage, is obviously a question that's going to pop up. How yeah. did you manage such a large scale business up until 5.36 in the office? So, I think lack of time to me is an effect. Hmm. There is something wrong. Hmm. You may have some periods where the workload is very high. You may have to stretch yourself. Yeah. I, as I said, I stretch myself by working from home. Hmm. Many times I spend one or two hours working. But that evening, Two hours is a must. I have to leave office. Come what me. <laughs> uh, so there's flexibility of you know yeah. working from home, mm. and I always believed in flexibility from day one. You know, mm. then this whole pandemic again, the, the whole subject of flexibility came in working from home, yeah. coming late. I have always believed in having flexibility. You know, because yeah. some people like to start a little late. Some people want to start early and I think each one has his own set of shall I say preferences so yeah. you can't box in everything together Correct. in the same way yeah okay yeah. there'll be some time where everybody should be there some you keep a certain mm. core time where mm. everybody will be there because there's some interdependence yeah. in working with others yeah. so I think flexibility is important number two uh, <clears throat> I think utilization of time I Hmm. I utilize my time in car, whatever hmm. I do, you know, at hmm. home. In the gym also I do. Many times <laughs> I'm working in the gym, reading papers with a cycle, you know. <laughs> yeah. So things like that. Yeah. But I think the larger issue is, I think you have to be focused. Yeah. You do a few things, but do them well. And so prioritization plays a very important role. Right. You have to prioritize what you want to do and don't try to do 20 things at a time. Identify high priority items then go all out after that. Yeah. And then you need to have talent, very good talent, which is better than you. Hmm. And you have to take some risk in trusting that talent, empowering them. And uh, yeah, there's a saying so that I like, normally yeah. I, if somebody earns my trust, not just financial trust, but yeah. trust in terms of capability, I empower that person yeah. much more wow. than many others because to that extent, I'm free. Yeah, yeah. That's sometimes true. it Sometimes it has not worked well, but by and large it has worked well. Okay. Yeah. 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 There's a saying that says, if you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Parallelly, you also became a father. So how did fatherhood change now your opinion of work-life balance? Because there was another angle and another facet as well. So I don't think because I was always, I had that, I never had time issue, you know, right. I'm very structured, I, you know, I have yeah. everything like planned, tuck, 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 tuck. <laughs> everybody knows that and I have a daily sheet, she knows about it. <laughs> I know exactly if 2 to 4 I kept for this, so I, yeah. to four, come me. I will be there for 2 to 4. You know? yeah. So it's very structured, my, and I think that's one of the negatives I get from my friends, mm. my family, that mm. you're so structured, you're like a robot, my wife yeah. tells me, like <laughs> everything is, has to go as per this. And yeah. it, so once it is structured, then <clears throat> I'm not flexible in that. Okay. So, for example, on, on a Sunday, I play golf from, say, I leave my house at 11, 11.30, I come back at 5.30. Yeah. Oh, wow. So, every, I will not come what me, I will not accept a lunch invitation, okay, on Sunday. No matter what happens. Come what me, nothing. Okay. Unless it's an absolute somebody's wedding, very close to on. But I will not accept a lunch invitation. Everybody knows that, you know. Yeah. After that, I have to have massage and things like that. So, in the evening after going, I have to go to the gym for one, one and a half hour. So, it's like… Set. Set. Everything yeah. is set, yeah. So, have you ever done anything <clears throat> impulsive in your life? That's not… That is the negative, which is yeah. you're not spontaneous enough, you know. Yeah. So, because I'm so structured, everything goes as per the plan and that uh, that's why I'm not so spontaneous. Mm -hmm. 
and many a time these days now that i've given up a active role in hmm. managing the company i have some and i would like to be busy all the time you know yeah <coughs> doing something i'm not saying work <coughs> so i have to learn the art of doing nothing wow it's yeah. difficult for me to so if i don't have anything in my daily sheet that i have to do this, this everything yeah. is like planned from morning to night yeah. you know yeah then i start feeling nervous what will i do <laughs> <laughs> when was the last time you took an off day No, no. These days with this pandemic, there are many times I don't days, have that yeah. much work. Not, not complete off, but Saturday, Sunday normally off. Off. You know, playing golf and all yeah. off. Yeah. So, what is a typical day in your life <clears> look like? So, you're talking now? Yeah, now. So now it's typical days. Get up morning seven, seven thirty. I read a lot of newspapers. I read about. <laughs> you get shocked. You get seven newspapers. Oh wow! So That's all the economic papers five. Yeah. yeah. Uh, then Times of India and then Times seven. So that itself, in the morning as soon as I get up, I have to. So night, I my phone is off. You know, I don't like to keep it on. Hmm. So I finish my WhatsApp, my emails, and my Twitter, hmm. whatever. In the morning, for at least half an hour to forty-five minutes it takes. Yeah. Then reading the papers takes about one hour. Okay. So one hour, forty-five minutes gone from seven, seven fifteen to eight thirty-nine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then whenever I have to come to office, then I do some stretching exercise in the morning for about ten minutes hmm. or so. Hmm. <coughs> and then I get ready and come to the office. If I have to come to the office these days, I start about nine, nine thirty, and come yeah. back at ten, mm. come here at ten. And then I must, depending on the day, so these are meetings. <laughs> depending on the sheet. <laughs> yeah, depending on the sheet. And how do you keep up with uh, ever-changing trends? You know, uh, especially when it comes to technology, uh, a lot of everything has moved to digital. Yeah. And you're yeah. a traditional. Yeah. You're a traditional. Yeah. Um, so I think more than the technological trends, I I like to study consumer trends. Right. I am not such a technology-oriented person. Mm. I understand what each technology is bringing. But I like studying consumer trends, mm. behavior trends. Mm. The whole, so I do that by traveling, by interacting with people. I'd gone to USA two, three years back, and that time all the trends were very clear: the vegan trend, the mm. organic trend, the natural trend. Yeah. Uh, I had met a lot of startups. So and now it is just it's matter of time. Yeah. It just comes to India. You know? Yeah. It, yeah. It goes global. Yeah. So I think it's very important to track trends. What is yeah. happening? in the environment that provides you a lot of opportunities for growth hmm. and uh, as far as technology is concerned i have a view point that technology is going to be the biggest disruptor yeah. in our lives and not just one technology but all the technology which are coming in digital technologies or new age technologies and organizations have to be a part of the technology change yeah. and you have to invest in them right and you can look at those changes in terms of a threat yeah. or an opportunity yeah. but can you participate in those and make these new trends into opportunity that's a big big challenge for organization right absolutely was there any i made it moment in your Meaning? life like that okay this is you know some people for them it's maybe purchasing a house is okay i made it you know or i got this job promotion that i was waiting for was there any in your career trajectory any such defining moment where you were like okay you know i'm i'm i think the formation yeah. of marico was a was a big big shall i say yeah uh, big moment or big moment for me to because it took 2 3 years of convincing yeah, before yeah and also it freed me up to yeah. me that looking back that has been the most important the highlight my stone in my yeah. journey yeah and then there are multiple others when went to public and things mm. like that. but this mm. was the, the most mm. Uh, mm. most impactful and after you went public <coughs> there was obviously the billionaire tag that was attached ah. did that change things how do you feel yeah i don't know money i <coughs> money doesn't excite me okay yeah um okay to some extent you can enjoy money but beyond that it, It doesn't impact, you know. And yeah. I, what, what are you going to do with the money? You know, I, my lifestyle has not changed. Mm. It's same for last ten, fifteen, twenty years. Yeah. I don't want to own a plane. I, I bought a better car compared to what it was. But I'm not going to be a part of a big bungalow or anything like that. So it's, it's the same. So how much? And the key thing is to how do you find ways to give back that wealth to others? Right. You know, to me, that is a bigger challenge today than enjoying that. Yeah. <coughs> By spending money on myself. Yeah. 
and are the same is the same kind of value system or the same thought process within your family as well your kids your wife uh i think i drive that mainly because yeah. my kids are young my son is uh, started his own business yeah. which is so he is now at that age he is more into building his business rather than Correct. you know giving something to the society but he is open to me doing that you know, yeah. my daughter is actively involved in giving so i yeah. i we do a lot of work in the area of mental, mental health. health yeah so she is managing that uh, yeah. completely on mm. her own mm. yeah and if you were to begin marico today yeah if you were to start uh, uh, build marico uh, today um what do you think would be different so i think today's environment is very different yeah, than it's what very it's very dynamic started. very very different yeah and uh, at one level there are many opportunities because of discontinuities disruption today is much more than mm. what it was many years mm. back and disruption mm. provides opportunities yeah. for growth uh, it is a big threat also so i think one would have to ride some disruptive way mm. way i think if you had to build a business, business today, yeah that's very very important you know um, at the same time there are many the ecosystem also is very well developed you can get good consultants mm. you can get mm. funders so today it cuts both ways the competition also is much much more but i think if i was starting a business i would have to ride uh, some new trend or mm. disruption mm. and offer something which is unique yeah. because if you offer a me to product or mm. a service then your chances of success will be limited mm. um because somebody else is already in that yeah so you have to be a differentiator pioneer yeah if you have to succeed in today's business, business environment yeah. Yeah. yeah and any such companies uh today's companies the newer companies the unicorns yeah, many of them that you you know personally so my feel son is actively yeah. involved in uh investments investments and he's invested in some at that time i'm talking four or five years they were back they were not unicorns but today they are like yeah. i don't know 5 10 billion dollar like nike and mama earth yeah. he's already invested in those companies hmm hmm so they doing really well they're yeah. doing well yeah. yeah and there are so many other entrepreneurs who have yeah without any business background falguni nair who is like Hmm. bank employee i knew that she helped me in helped me in taking the company public in marico in those days through as a part of kotak bank so but she started and she's how she done yeah. similarly mama arts also so there are many hmm. examples of individuals who are not coming from business family who are but who have created the yeah. but yeah. there are many other who have failed also so let's not look at but it's good to have many entrepreneurs right. uh, entering business because i strongly believe that entrepreneurs add a lot of value to all the stakeholders correct yeah. absolutely and <coughs> there's a lot written about all your successes right like your mm. highlights the high mm. points mm. um is there a f- particular failure or a low point that you remember that you that you <coughs> dealt with and then learned from subsequently so i've had multiple so i don't know i can speak on the subject for last next 15 minutes but <laughs> um i i'll break it up into two or three different hmm phases the first phase was because of my lack of knowledge in some and under investing in some competencies we failed for example product development legal mm. function mm. quality assurance function we we had some problems and i think all it needed was to set up those departments yeah. so i think that was easy the second phase was going into businesses which are unrelated we went into a b2b business right. in in usa because uh, we wanted to grow international business didn't do well but the learning from that was instead of doing that we could have acquired other businesses in doing other countries yeah. so that led to acquisition of business in egypt vietnam hmm. south africa so there was learning from that and from every failure i have a thing to learn hmm. and then there are product failures you know so just to give an example i can give many example one example was when we launched uh, safola bake snacks about 10 years back in mumbai it didn't do well because we gave priority of health over taste it was under the brand name safola and that didn't do well it was not as tasty but mm. it was very healthy mm. consumer rejected so when we went to oats and masala oats mm. we developed a product which was very tasty yeah. and did a lot of consumer insighting on taste and that's been a big success mm. so you so, just you learned uh, yeah i mean after every failure there has been some, some learning which i have applied at a little later stage and which has helped mm. me a lot mm. in my own business mm. yeah keeping today's startup ecosystem in mind what do you think is more important growth or profitability both but growth in the initial my mindset is to have a 
growth first, mm. build a certain critical mass. Mm. Because growth is very important. Hmm. You know, growth is like oxygen. All of, if you stop growing, then the business, everybody starts losing interest in the organization. Yeah. But at some stage, that growth has to become profitable. Right. I can't see a 10 year period or 20 year period where you know you can go on going growth and burning money. Yeah. So you need to have defined that, okay, after this period, three, five, seven years, I'm okay. Hmm. That kind of time frame, you will make the business profitable. So hmm. I would say profitable growth is something over a long period of time, organization should pursue. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> and any advice or feedback that you've received as an entrepreneur in all these years or uh -huh. a business owner uh -huh. um, that you'd like to share with budding entrepreneurs? So I think uh, in today's environment, uh, the advice is to create a strong right to win. That can only come out of innovation, can come out of pioneering moves. You can't be a me too player. And uh, that should lead to a certain critical mass in terms of size. Yeah. It could be a patent, if it could be a technology, but something which is differentiated. Correct. And then back it up by investing in talent and culture. Hmm. And the last is uh, have very good governance. Governance goes hand in hand with, with any business. Yeah. It's just not large business. It's very important to have right governance from day one. Yeah. Otherwise, you're sowing seeds of taking shortcuts within the organization at a very early stage. Mm, correct. Yeah. And you know, speaking of entrepreneurs, you actually dedicate a lot of your time with Ascent, your foundation. Yes. Um, <clears throat> and it's unique because as opposed to just uh, contributing money or, yes. you yeah. know, attending one event, there's all, there's a lot of time. Yes. Your time is the largest investment. Yeah. So you're absolutely right. I've always felt that I am not the kind of person who wants to donate money to hospital mm. and forget about it that I'm going to donate X amount. You know. That's not me. I am more into active giving. Yeah. So when I say active giving, apart from spending money, I have to be involved right. in that cause. And yeah. I should be willing to spend time, whatever time, 10, 20, 30 percent. Yeah. Uh, so that cause which I'm pursuing, I should be passionate about that cause. Correct. So I should enjoy spending time on that cause. And Ascent is something which I started 10 years back now. Mm. We completed 10 years. It has evolved the business model. And uh, we've got, I think, I think we have very solid building blocks in creating Ascent. Mm. We have 850, 840 entrepreneurs wow. associated with us, combined likely turnover of Roughly about 53,000 crores. Wow. And if we are able to influence them, mm. if we are creating systems for them to learn from each other, mm. if they are able to scale up, yeah. if we are offering other advice like mentorship, coaching, uh, seminars on, you know, talent, marketing, distributions and so on, I think we will we'll help them grow. Yeah. Because if they grow, then to that extent, I am giving something back. Yeah. Because if entrepreneurs will be the only people who will create that $5 trillion economy yeah. for India. Government's role is limited ultimately. They have to create infrastructure, yeah. they have to create the right policy framework. But ultimately, it will be the entrepreneurs who will drive this India growth story. Right. So I had that in mind that entrepreneurs are going to play a very important role in driving India's future. Mm. And can I play my role in in making entrepreneurs succeed and scale because I have gone through journey of from being a small to medium to large, large yeah. and my role shifting from doing things to getting things done to influencing yeah. things. Can I help the entrepreneurs so that you know it, it has a multiplier effect yeah. in the economy? Uh, essentially they could leverage <coughs> your experience that you've had. Over Not only mine but learn from each other and right. you know I, I think yes overall can I Equip them to become bigger entrepreneurs, better entrepreneurs. Yeah. Yeah. I want to sign up. I'll also sign up. Sure. <laughs> <Most welcome. laughs> delighted, delighted. Absolutely. Um, and around the same time when you started Ascent, you also about, I think, eight years ago, stepped down as CEO uh, yes. actively yeah. from Marico. Yeah. What was that uh, day like? What was that experience like to relinquish control after that many years? <laughs> so it was tough. Yeah. I think prior to set, stepping down, the decision itself was very tough. Yeah. Because it's uh, it's a decision which involves the family, it, how it is perceived in the society, and Indian society is still very hierarchical. Yeah. Indian businessmen are very hierarchical. They want their children to succeed. Yeah. Uh, so that's normal expectation. You know? So to deviate from there, it uh, you have to first be convinced yourself because 
from do, doing full time work to stepping down yeah. it's a big move so are you ready at a personal level that was my big challenge number 2 how do i convince my family <laughs> second challenge and number 3 how do i convince the society in terms of that i have taken this step where my children are not going to be so it was a tough uh, yeah how many years did it take for you no, to arrive take, at the decision no maybe the time taken was 6 months or a year a year or so from the time you decided to execute uh, from the time yeah i mean the this whole evaluation and discussion mm. with the board it could have taken a year or so yeah. yeah do you remember your last day no but the fact that i i have continued in the office yeah. and i play some role uh, it's not like that i'm going to exit office but yeah. i think before uh, i step down uh, i think the board asked me to write down what exactly i'll do and what i will not do hmm because there is a tendency to interfere on a day to day basis correct because you build that business yeah. you know that business yes. so that had to be avoided from day one i have written down what will come to me for decision hmm. and what will be handled by the the md hmm. and then after that what a retirement in i don't think i can retire no. you know i have to be occupied i yeah. cannot just sit and do nothing so as of today you're not retired <laughs> no i'm not retired yeah. because i do a lot of things you know and i think that gave me a great uh, opportunity to do a lot of new things because i had time mm. so as i could spend more time on essent i my son started his business and i i spent some mm. time with him mm. my daughter gave to the health initiative yeah. and then i <clears throat> joined three external statutory boards i have joined uh, two advisory boards of private equity companies I speak a lot yeah. uh, on an average two to three a month. But in my book uh, book promotion exercise, I must have spoken six to seven times. Wow! I see eight to ten times a month. I must have done more than one hundred and fifty appearances, you know, for the book itself. Yeah. So that kept me busy. So yeah, I think a combination of things. Plus, I meet a lot of entrepreneurs who are members of SN, non-members of SN. Mm. They want advice. Mm. I am there to help yeah. them. You know, I have to make a big difference too. Yeah. At least on subjects where I can add value to them, I'm always open to do that. Right. And did it come as a surprise <laughs> that none of your kids took over as CEO once you no, stepped no, down? No, no, no. I yeah. strongly believe that you know I think each individual is born with some God-given gifts, hmm. and you have to leverage your God-given gifts. Yeah. You know, no amount of forcing is going to help. You know? Right. So, and I think the Indian society has to change. You don't expect because IT is doing well, just to should start some hmm. new trend. I think you have to identify what strengths they are bringing to the table and mold their career based on their strengths. Yeah. So I think both of them have been able to form, find their calling and now they are doing something which is they are enjoying. Hmm. So, so I think they would enjoy life, just not monetary, you know, yeah. gains. Yeah. And you've also become a grandfather. You've been a grandfather. Yeah. Yeah. What yeah. is that like? Oh, that's been the most amazing experience yeah. in my life. I have never anticipated that I will spend so much time with my grandchildren and I will become. partly because i have more time now and you know it's something else it's yeah. it's it's uh, it's something which is very difficult to describe but it's it's really rewarding and it's yeah. it's one of the best mm. best time you can spend is with your grandchildren yeah. Yeah. yeah and what's next for you so next is continuing or whatever i am doing yeah. i i started a new business also uh, after stepping down in, mm. in aqua mm. aqua therapies So I think I'll continue doing that. I don't think I'll do anything new, but uh, just expand uh, and spend more time on Ascent, on Marival mm. Health Initiative, mm. and whatever else I'm doing. Yeah. At this stage, I'm very fit. I'm more fitter than I was maybe 30 years back. <laughs> I can exercise for two hours. Nothing yeah. happens. Yeah. <clears throat> so I think I'll continue this journey on being fit and agile, and you know, mentally active. Yeah. yeah. And working for a long time still. I can't see myself retiring. <laughs> okay, so now we have this new segment. It's called Things About <coughs> Me. You can't find on Google. There are a lot, but we've narrowed yeah. it down. Okay. So I'm just going to ask you. Yeah. Fast questions. Yeah. How would your family describe you? One, I said robo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, bit cold, but mm. uh, willing to help. Very open. Uh, very transparent. Uh, very simple. very little ego or no ego uh, very structured okay what would your alternate career choice be if not nothing, nothing. business 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 <laughs> on my own business nothing else and in your spare time what's your favorite thing to do 
I love playing golf. I love yeah. listening to classical music. Yeah. I love uh, reading, mm-hmm. uh, spending time with grandchildren and family. Mm. A good game of golf or a good read? Golf. <coughs> what is your comfort food? When you say comfort, what is my favorite food or what is my Just food? Just comfort food. Like I love know. chocolates. Oh yeah. <laughs> but I, I control myself because I'm very weight conscious. So, but yeah. I, anything chocolate, chocolate mousse, chocolate, chocolates per se, chocolate ice cream to me. Yeah. Your biggest fear? I think the loss of some, some dear ones, you know, that all that fear is that somebody, something happened to them, then you yeah. know, what, what will happen? happen? Yeah. 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 Um, and what piece of advice would you give the 10 year old Harsh? 10 year old Harsh? I think you pursue at that stage, at the age of 10, you should pursue and you know, mm. do different things to identify your calling and where your strength is. Yeah. And your most valued life lesson so far? I never give up. Grit. You know, you, you will have setbacks, but you should have the ability to fight back and get back. And that's grit, which is combination of passion plus perseverance and determination. Yeah. Okay, great. And now we have this one other segment where mm. we're going to show you an old photo. Okay. And you have to tell us the memory attached to that My photo. My own photo? Yeah, it's something to do. It's a photo from your life. Okay, yeah. okay. Where do you get this from? <laughs> Research. Really <laughs> try. <laughs> can do this one. Yeah, this is my daughter and me. <laughs> I had that a sporting moustache. I had a lot of hair. <laughs> I didn't use my own product. That's the problem. So I don't know why. <laughs> and what about this one? This is my granddaughter. And uh, I think we're playing a game. Looks like Monopoly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I enjoy playing <laughs> Monopoly with my granddaughter and my Do you end up winning or losing? Uh, it doesn't matter winning lose. Just being with them, <laughs> just enjoy it. So. Okay. That's it. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Karishma. Thank you so and much. Enjoy. Yeah. Thank you yeah. for doing this. Thank Great. you. Thank you. If you like this episode, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit that bell icon. Thank you all for being the best community and I'll see you soon. And how do you, you know, look at that part of your life? Because you said that, uh, you know, when you did get pregnant, you were giddy with joy. You just gave an interview. Um, but were you nervous and scared? I was not very giddy with joy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, I was happy mm-hmm. because I loved him. And... Uh, then I asked him, I, on, I called him and I asked him that if you don't want this child, then I won't have it. And then he says, no, no, I would love you to have this child. So then everybody told me, no, 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 how will you do it alone? Because he was already married, I couldn't marry him and couldn't go to Antigua to live there and all yeah. that. So, uh, but what happens in the you are blind. When you are in love, you don't listen to anybody. No, no children will listen to their parents. Ye mat karo, wo mat karo. So, how I was the same. Yeah.